Hello and welcome to our fifth episode of Cat Chat. I am Chris Wallace and... I'm Jenna Linusars. And welcome. How you doing, Jenna? I'm good. Happy fifth anniversary. Happy fifth episode. Podcast. Anniversary podcast five. Big five. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doing pretty good. I like your sweatshirt. Yeah, look at our new stuff. Yeah, we got some Cat Chat swag going on. If you're watching on YouTube, you can check this stuff out, courtesy of Paul Prince. That's right. Call Paul Prince. At the Dome. At the Dome. Check Reach out, out this embroidery us. work. Got the fresh embroidery. We do screen printing. Up to five colors as <laughs> Humble well. Humble plug. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Come check us out. Our prices are competitive with everyone in the area. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> plug. All right. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to another episode of Cat Chat. We're happy to have you guys back again with us for our March episode. Chris, happy to have you back with us. Um, it is spring. Thank God. I think finally, maybe. Yeah, um, you know how it goes. As soon as we get happy with, maybe some I shouldn't weather. even say it. Yeah, as soon as we take the hoodie off. Nope, put it back on. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't even go there. Yeah. But just, we're just hoping for continuation into the next season. I know. Pretty soon it's going to be summertime, um, and maybe maybe we'll be on a beach somewhere. Who knows? Right, right. Um, but I'm excited for today's lineup. Yes. We have some yes, little, yes, little yes. sweet thanks from Perrin Woods who are going to be joining us. Um, we have um, Perrin Woods students who were participants in the um, speech soiree. Oh. Yeah. Speech soiree. Yeah. Can you spell soiree? No. <laughs> I ain't going to try to. It was their... I'm glad um, I could say it. Soiree. Soir I can't even say it. Soiree. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it was their um, speech competition over there at Perrin Woods. First time they did it. So they're going to join us in a little bit. And That's then awesome. And we have um, city commissioners, Tracy Tackett and Crystal Brown. Um, they're going to be joining us too to talk about kind of their goals um, coming up in the city commission. Okay. And then we have Stephen Massey as our featured alumni. Featured alumni. Big Steve. Yes. I'm excited about that. It should be fun. Yeah, it'll be a good show. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I guess we should get into our high five. I mean, since it's the fifth episode, let's Ooh. go ahead and do a high okay. five, right? Five is the magic number tonight. You're so right. Yeah. Good point. All right. Hey, what well, we let's got? do it. Let's, let's get go. into the high five. All right. Well, first in our fifth high five. Now you. Now I'm like wondering if we should like have some balloons or high some five, some pigeons five. or <laughs> <laughs> something to celebrate this. Yeah. Um, I want to give a shout out to our girls basketball team over at Springfield High, um, who is breaking through all of the barriers. Making history um, with all of their success this season. Yes. Career wins in a season. Yes, career wins in a season. Um, I think furthest that they've ever made it in the tournament for Sectional their team. Finals, absolutely. And um, uh, Coach Terry Tolliver was Coach of the Year. Yes, yes, for District Nine. Yes, District Nine Coach of the Year. And obviously, you know, several of his players have um, individual accolades that they yes. are, are bringing in. Um, but I just think that they are making a huge name for themselves, and I think that that's fantastic. Absolutely. And only one senior on that team. Yes. So. Yes. Lots of room to grow. Looking forward to seeing the just, Lady Cats getting after Lady Cats. The Lady Cats are going to get after I love that. So Absolutely. congratulations, girls, on an awesome, awesome season. Can't wait to continue to cheer you on in years to come. Absolutely. All right. Next, I, next, next yeah. I want to give a shout out. This is so sweet, Chris. I want to give a shout out to Simon Kenton Elementary. They had their whole school sing Rise Up um, mm. to two of their teachers, one of which is actively battling cancer. Um, it was a surprise. So they brought the teachers in, and as they were bringing them in, Ooh. the kids were singing Rise Up. Tearjerker. Yes. If if you listen to that song and it doesn't make you cry, I'm really kind of questioning where you are. Right. Um, so that was really sweet. Um, and the other teacher 
Um, she has previously battled cancer, so they continue to support her as she's going through that journey. So That's awesome. Simon Kenton, you are wonderful. You are awesome. Thank you for supporting your fellow teachers. High five, Simon Kenton. Yes. Who's the third one? Give me the third one. I think you want to give a little shout out to um, some people at Lagonda, right? One, yeah. Shout out to Lagonda Elementary and the program, My Brothers and My Sisters Keeper. Uh, they decided on Valentine's Day, they made 74 Valentine, Valentine Day cards and sent them to uh, the Springfield Senior Citizen Nursing Home, uh, the Springfield Manor. Mm hmm citizen, a senior citizen home, and uh, I just thought that was very thoughtful, you know? Um, yes. When some kids, a lot a lot of time, kids think about their selves, themselves on holidays, mm -hmm. especially Valentine's Day. They're wondering how many Valentine's Day cards they're going to get. For sure. What kind of candy they are going to get. And I think that program with my brothers and my sister's keeper and uh, Richard Ichi, and company Mr. There. Ichi. Mr. Ichi and company uh, is bringing awareness to them kids about thinking about others and putting uh, putting others in front of themselves and being thoughtful. So kudos to Lagonda Elementary, my brothers and my sisters keep. Good job, Lagonda. Very thoughtful. Yes. Well, my fourth high five I want to give is to the Springfield High Esports team. Okay. What they doing? What they they doing? are back in, in the, the regionals. regionals. Yes. Back. And this is like a newer team, um, just in the kind of infancy of their growth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, esports hasn't been around forever. Um, but I can remember as soon as this team kind of developed, they were advancing to this level of competition all the time. So obviously a really talented group of kids and they're back in regionals again this year. So uh -huh. again, another group of kids making a name for themselves and something that they're obviously very passionate about, very talented in. So we're wishing the best of luck to Springfield Esports. Man, high five to you guys, man. That I mean, these young Wildcats just like being in the mix of tournaments. Like right. all of our Wildcats, whether it's the debate, team, football, basketball, everybody right. likes to climb, man. So shout out. Well, and I just like it because they're always in these arenas with all of these really large schools, right? Like mm -hmm. you're talking about, you know, schools up in Cleveland, Cincinnati, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And then like here's Springfield, right? Yeah. And people are like, Springfield at? Yeah. Where is that at? And so it just, you know, continues to make a name for the school in a positive Absolutely. way. Um and, you know, of course, without getting into all of the, you know, career opportunities and things like that, that esports, mm -hmm. you know, can present. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm really happy to see the kids enjoying something Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Doing our so, kids are doing a great job of putting yeah. us on the map. Yeah. Good job, esports. Um, my last high five I want to give is for the Museum of Art event that featured our middle school and high school artist um, from Springfield High and the School of Innovation. So the kids got a chance to display um, their artwork, do some spoken word poetry, um, really just kind of show their creative side. So it was a really good way for them to um, have a feature, right? Like put their stuff on display in a, in a real, a real Absolutely. place. Absolutely, that is so awesome. So that was really cool. Um, and I think that wraps us up. One, two, three, four, five takes us home. Five takes us home. But we're just getting started. We've got some great guests coming up, and I'm excited to yeah. uh, hear what they have to say. Yes. Now, Chris, you're going to have to remind them what to do with these high fives because sometimes they forget. So what I need you guys to do is list the five mm -hmm. high fives mm -hmm. that we gave. Do we send? Do you want them to put it on Instagram? Please and thank you. Put it on Instagram. Yep. In a direct message. In a direct message. And let us know what was our high five. And we got a little swag bag for you. Simple now, as that, y'all. One, two, three, four, five. And with Paul Prince jumping now, the swag bag can Ooh. be amazing. We don't know what can be in the swag bag. You know, we had just started when, about five months ago. We just started <laughs> Paul Prince. Another plug. But, 
now that it's up and running, the swag bags are well worth putting those top five in on Instagram. So I would look, uh, make sure you watch this show, put it in Instagram, and go and get you some swag. Pop right. that collar. <laughs> Send it to <laughs> at SCSDOH, y'all. You need the swag. All right. All right. You ready to get into the show? Let's get it. Let's do it. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Cat Chat. For our Community Connection segment today, I'm joined by City Commissioners Tracy Tackett and Commissioner Crystal Brown. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for being here today. So I really want to get started by asking you guys, Tracy, I know that you are brand new to City Commission. Crystal, mm -hmm. you are just relatively, relatively newer. Yeah. Um, but tell me why you decided to get into city government. Why throw your hat in there um, to start making change? What was the driving force behind your decisions? Oh, okay. So I will take that one first. Mm -hmm. um, I had done a lot of work with the Clark County Democratic Party. Um, I was amazed by uh, Sonny and Bev Young when they were supporting the Obama campaign in 08. So I just wanted to get involved. And so I ended up being the secretary of the Clark County Democratic Party for four years. And it just came a time that they just basically tapped me and said, you're up next. Um, I, I tried to get out of it. And uh, they said I had enough seasoning <laughs> and enough uh, maturity at this point in time in my life to be able to handle that. So that's truly the way I, I was in place. And Joyce Chilton, the former city commissioner, um, she did a lot of work with me and a lot of kind of um, getting me prepared for that role. Mm -hmm. um, because typically we will see um, that there's typically one woman and one person of color and Joyce really served for both of those roles right. throughout her entire 12 year career. But however, um, I'm really pleased that 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 the Democratic Party and also um, Joyce kind of tapped me and said, "You've been doing tons of community service work. It's time to let let's go and let's really get into the ring." Mm -hmm. Tracy yeah. is one of the newest commissioners. Mm -hmm. Why throw your hat in? The newest commissioner. Yes, <laughs> yes you are. <laughs> That's my bailout. <laughs> Um, you know, I've always been active in the community. So mm -hmm. like Crystal, just always involved and interested in improving Springfield and Clark County. Uh, my life experience took me through a road of advocating for my daughter who had epilepsy. And when she passed away, I seen an opportunity to help people at a greater um, on a greater platform. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it just kept coming to me like you should run for office, you should run for office. And I was like, what? No way. Yes. <laughs> yes way. And, yes and here way. I am, you know. Um, I lost my first race and, and could have stopped. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I kept going because I really believed in it. I believe in the work that the government can do to improve um, Springfield and make an impact on people's lives. And if everybody keeps saying no, 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 like I was, you know, who's going to fill the seats? So. Right. I'm a, definitely a person that's like a, I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Now, both of you, in addition to um, Bridget Houston, you know, mm -hmm. are part of this shift in our city commission um, of the composition changing to a majority of women. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this is Women's History Month in March. Um, what does that mean for each of you individually? Crystal, you talked about it a little bit, but... You know, I think that's something major in yeah. our city that's happening. Um, but, you know, speak a little bit about that. Sure. I, I, again, was, when I was running, I kept saying, oh, this is so ridiculous that I'm the youngest person running, I'm the only black person running, and I'm the only woman running. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that was something that was shocking to me. Like, man, Nobody else is interested in doing this. And again, I wasn't necessarily like, I'm going to be city commissioner. It was just through people mm -hmm. coming up. It, I'm sure Tracy was a part of those conversations mm -hmm. as well, because we both served mm -hmm. at, uh, serving the Democratic Party for many years, which is why you see that closeness between us. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like women in spaces, it will automatically change a space, right? But having a majority of women is 
absolutely profound. We just made history, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm really excited to see where this trend will take us. And I'm really excited to see how much other diversity that mm -hmm. we can bring to the city commission. So absolutely, really excited. Yeah, it's definitely an exciting time. Um, the reflection of women leadership in Springfield, I think not only just in the city commission is exciting, our county commissioners also female dominated, mm -hmm. first female sheriff, first police chief, yes. female police chief. I mean, women are definitely turning a corner here. And I remember, um, you know, as being a small business owner, I always felt kind of like an outsider as a woman business owner, which I think made me more resilient to run for office because we still feel that, you know, we still feel that we're not asked to be at the table or you don't come to the table unless asked to be there and not just ask, but we belong at the table. Sure. And I, I think that that's really a big um, reflection of the work that we do. Um, and a lot of the women leadership in the community, you just, at some point, you just have to go go for it. You know, mm -hmm. there's always this fear and, and judgment um, that we also put on ourselves, right? As women, mm -hmm. um, when I went to Wittenberg University, my honors thesis was, right when I was getting ready to start my first political run, and it was based on the barriers women still face when running for office. And so I was also kind of preparing myself for that. What was I going to experience? The judgment of what I'm wearing. Yeah. At what kind of parent am I? Men mm -hmm. were not facing those type of things from everything that I was educating myself on. So, you know, it's an exciting time. It brings new perspective, new energy. And, you know, the, the men that we serve with have been very respectful and, you know, celebrate us as well. So shout out to our, our co-commissioner guys. So. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's just, you know, exciting, right, to have those role models um, even at a local level, right, mm -hmm. for those little girls to look up to Absolutely. and say, okay, this is attainable, right? I can right. now see somebody who looks like me yeah. in a power position, in a leadership position. Mm -hmm. Sure. I um, have a photo that someone sent to me when uh, during Legacy 24, which is another connector from the city and the city school district. Mm -hmm. So um, two of the young ladies who attend the School of Innovation that come in my office that hang out, they were standing behind my uh, little podium seat and they were like you know, doing all the things. And that just touched my heart so much because they were just excited. Like, this is where Miss Brown sits at. This is what mm -hmm. she does. And it, the picture just spoke so profoundly to me in regards to they can do it too. Mm -hmm. And that's what that said to me. And, you know, mm -hmm. I absolutely love, love those students and uh, twin one, as I call them. And my good, good buddy, Aaron, they were there and they were having a great time just being able to stand in those shoes. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to ask you guys, you know, obviously being on Cat Chat, our district's podcast, you know, I wanted to ask you, how do we go about making that connection between our city government and our kids? You know, how do we further build those connections between those two, or those two organizations? I know you guys are both deeply rooted in our schools um, with the various <laughs> connections that you have, um, but how, how do we do it? How do we further build those? You know, I think that us being available, us being out there and present and, and visible, you know, I remember kind of growing up, I couldn't name a commissioner. Mm. I didn't know what they did. Who were they? And I remember even just running for office, people going, I don't even know who commissioners are. How? What do they do? How many are there? What is happening with commissioners? So I think that um, we have an opportunity as this new perspective, new energy on the commission, female commissioners, um, and not only just us as commissioners, but we have Sheila Rice. We have so many females out there really paving the way for girls. Um, I think that being present and involved in the community, in our schools, I've spent time in Schaefer and Hayward recently with the different girls after school programs, you know, and they just never even thought, what what is this? Like, what is this government job, right? Yeah. So for me, it's making the connections with people in the schools and in our district, um, in the community. I think that's, that's how we kind of improve and bridge that gap between government 
and schools. Absolutely. Yeah. And I asked Tracy to go first because it's really a no-brainer with me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've worked as a teacher um, in the district starting in 2012 and then a behavior coach in the district and then now a student services supervisor for the district. I have four buildings and I serve as city commissioner. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't think it gets more like a parent of that connector. And that was something that I ran on too and still stand on because it just puts me in a place to really be able to drive those connections. Mm -hmm. You know, we had spoke about Legacy 24. I do want to send a huge shout out to um, Jackie and Aaron for all the work that they do in that space. And I loved seeing Tracy over at Schaefer mm -hmm. because you're bringing in so much diversity and huge shout out to Zach Rains and Schaefer mm -hmm. for like their involvement with the city as well. They have just hopped on board and they've taken it and they've run with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just very excited to see, you know, Promise and our city yeah. commissioners yeah. and all the connections that are already made. But if anybody has any ideas of how we could further make connections, I am 100% open to that. And um, we're currently having a book study as well to connect the city uh, staff and the community members with the Springfield City School District employees. Um, and that meets actually today at 3.30. So the last Wednesday of every month, we meet here at the Dome. Uh, Tracy is involved with that as well. So it just there are opportunities out there already. And again, if you have any ideas, I would love to hear those. That is leading with meaning and purpose. Absolutely. And connecting people. Yes. And I, I think that's just the vibe that I think we put off and, sure. and where we can go from here. Mm -hmm. And that was, again, mm -hmm. something that I stood for and still stand mm -hmm. for is how do we build those connections so that we can share out resources. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Crystal, I keep thinking of you explaining to the kids on that Legacy 24 day, like, hey, this forum is open to all of you at any point. Mm -hmm. um, and I could see the light going off in some of their heads. What do you mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you mean I can come here? And I, and just seeing them acknowledge that little bit of power that they have, even as a kid or a student, um, I think that was a really powerful thing for them. Um, and I'm excited to see how that further continues yeah. um, as those Legacy 24 projects, you know, go on and those connections continue. Um, you know, we've talked about Legacy 24 on our podcast already. Okay. Um, anything else that you want to mention as far as anything coming up between the city and um, the schools or anything else we can mention? Again, just the What Happened to You book study. It's mm -hmm. a study, a uh, book study that's based in the neurosequential model, along with uh, the impacts of trauma on the human brain. And so, again, we've got Chief Elliott involved, Commissioner Tackett. I mean, uh, Commissioner Houston is involved as well. It's just, the, again, I think it's a great place for us to come together, learn about each other, and really be able to experience what does it mean to be a teacher in our district, a student, a family, a parent, as well as what does it mean to be a city commissioner or chief of police or people are just coming from all walks to participate in that. So that's ongoing and for the next couple of months, again, that last Wednesday, I think it is a great space to be able to learn about the impacts of trauma on the brain so that we can rethink as leaders you know, move our mindset from what will happen to you, to what happened to you from what's wrong with you. I think that question, even that in itself mm -hmm. is so huge and phenomenal. I'm just really excited to see where that takes the city. Mm -hmm. So you, just to recap what you said, that's really pulling a lot of different groups of people together. Yes. So that everybody is kind of on the same page. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was the goal in my thinking of that. And also Micah Bailey, who's a behavior coach, also leads that with me as well. So We've got social workers coming in from Troy virtually, uh, teachers from Dayton. I mean, we've just got a nice platform for us to come together and be able to share it in ourselves and not be able to recognize any trauma that we have and understand the space that we're moving out of so that we can then in turn be patient and have relationships because we're all human beings. We're all relational creatures who love to be in our little flocks. So just seeing what that actually means, because I don't think we ever take that physiological dive 
into why do we act like that? Why do we act the way we act? Why do we respond the way we respond? So I just think it's hugely important. Mm. Yeah. And it, it again, it's so many people from all over the city. Yes. So. I really just want to kind of close, um, you know, now that the new commission has kind of formed and had some time to gel together, um, what do you guys feel like are going to be maybe your biggest obstacles moving forward? And what are you most optimistic about with this new energy and new focus for the city of Springfield? I think um, Springfield has been a sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's awakening. I feel like there's so much opportunity right now for growth. We're going through growing pains and some readjustment on what the future looks like mm. and the opportunities that are available for Springfield. So um, I think trying to work together as a community to um, address growth issues and and bring more people to the table for new perspective, different perspective. And um, I think that that is truly probably the, the biggest barrier I see walking into this as somebody who's grown up in this community, who um, has been established in this community, has felt stable in this community. You know, it, there's a little bit of shaking up and it's exciting but scary at the same mm -hmm. time. And I think that's just life. I think that's just, mm -hmm. we're always like that, right? Growth is scary. Um, but then you get through it and you look back and go, oh, yeah, look <laughs> look at this, right? right? You, at least you hope so, right? Mm -hmm. um, so taking those opportunities that are that are coming our way is exciting for Springfield. So, Yes, and again, like mm -hmm. I will always say is that that excitement is always there. Mm -hmm. And I just look at future things as who knows what's imaginable, mm -hmm. who knows where we're going. So that's for me an, a question that I'm like, how does one even answer that, right? Because we have ever-changing needs. We have some some things that we currently have needed for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I love that analogy of mm -hmm. Springfield's a sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. I, yes. Like that just made me out loud chuckle. Yep. So I'm really excited about that too, just that analogy, because we are so much. I've lived in several different cities and several different states, and I found myself here in Springfield, something I never thought at 17 when I left, like, juices, I'm out of here from this very school building, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then it just always shocks me to be back and just the hunger of wanting to serve Springfield is mm -hmm. I can't imagine the future. All I know is the work that I can put in every day to try to have an impact on that future and a positive impact on that future. So I'm just excited. And I am also always rooting for the underdog. So in my governmental career, I am always like talking about, I look forward to the day where we are no longer part of greater Dayton, but we are Springfield standing alone. Yeah. That's Springfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that's part of that uh, giant waking up. That's right. Man. Roar. Yeah. Yeah. Like like rat chat. <laughs> yeah. That's my roar. 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 <laughs> you know, Willie puts out a better roar than that. I mean, we're just here, you know, <laughs> helping and supporting Willie the Wildcat. Yeah, that's right. Does that still exist? Okay. Like, I have asked Coach Mo about this. Like, where is the mascot? Willie the Wildcat. It's coming. It's okay. coming. I have heard that yep. they have a new one coming around. Ooh, yes. That one is probably. We're going to need them at Holiday in the City. Period. We're going to all the things. Yes, yes. Your trick or treat bag. Yep. Downtown trick or treat. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. A lot of yes. things coming. Yeah. yeah. Well, exciting. ladies, thank you so much for coming on Cat Chat. I Cheers. really appreciate all of your perspectives and all of the energy that you bring. Um, and I'm looking forward to what's to come. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. We'll be right back with more Cat Chat in a few minutes. All right, welcome back to Cat Chat, uh, Springfield City School District podcast. And in this segment, we would have this is our featured alumni segment, and I would like to introduce to you a North High School alumni, Stephen Massey. Panthers, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Go I'm doing Panthers, well. huh? Yes, Good to sir. see you. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Go Springfield High Wildcats. Springfield High Wildcats. Yeah. How, how's it feel to wear the blue and gold? Are you you, you used to the red and blue you know, still, or did you are you starting to come around? Always, <laughs> always revert back to one of my colleagues, Nettie Carter. You know, okay. oh yeah, we, we love the Panther, but uh, we are we are Wildcats now. Yeah. That's what our city stands for. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I won't go on because I know you're going to lead this, but. Going to Canton the last two years has been so prideful. Yeah. It's just been so prideful. I, yeah. I can't even put it into words. That's what exactly I was just gonna say. Definitely. You can start to yeah. You can start to sit the you can start to see the city just like, okay, we're Springfield High. We're Springfield High. We've got some stuff to hang our hat on. Yes. And uh, it's starting to bleed into the other sports as well. You know, that that, yes. that playoff time atmosphere, the kids are Really trying to, uh, we talked about that earlier in our segment as well, me and Jenna, about yeah. how our kids are doing their own work to put Springfield on the map to surrounding cities and communities as yes. well. So it's good. Yeah. But, man, it's good to have you. Good to be here. Uh, let's get right into it, man. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself um, coming up here as an alumni. What was it like? being part of uh, this community here as a young adult, yeah. comparing it to nowadays. Ooh. <laughs> we, man, if we had enough time, Mr. Right. Wallace, uh, first of all, thanks for having me again. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you say that, the first thing I reflect on is a lot of people may not know about it was Willie's Fan Club. Willie's Fan Club. Hey, I knew yeah. I was going to learn some stuff today, Willie's so tell Club. me about so, it. So, you know, I went to, I went, I'm a Southside boy. Mm -hmm. I went to Springfield. I went to Highlands. I went to Hayward. And that was, uh, that was uh, we were the Big Red. So uh, Big back Red. then, uh, we, were, uh, we were a powerhouse. We had pretty good rivals with uh, all the other schools in mm -hmm. the city, Clark, Roosevelt, Teddy's, uh, yeah. Franklin. We yeah. We battled. We had this thing called the Triple Crown. Yeah. Three sports. That's right. It was uh, football, basketball, and track. Mm -hmm. And we were Triple Crown winners two of the years I was there, three years I was there. But anyhow, uh, going back to Willie's Fan Club, I went from Hayward to North because uh, the great Coach Wiseman, I, I wasn't that good of a player, so I didn't think that I would make the team but I always loved South. Mm -hmm. And so I went to North, talked my mom into it so I can play basketball. Okay. But being able to, to go to Springfield High's games, which was South then, sit back, and, and the, we had that section called Willie's Fan Club. I'd be up in there with them. And then just like the pride we had. And, and when I come to sporting events now, I hope we, we rebuild that. We bring yeah. that back. To where and I see sections. I see uh, the student section. There's spurts of it. Spurts of it. But it's not where it's not what, what it used we to be. remember Ooh, as. I, yeah, we would be lit, man. Yeah, it was absolutely. Like, we were just like we were on fire for our school, our community, yeah. the culture. It was uh, it was about the culture of the school, mm -hmm. the alumnus, uh, the uh, the student faculty, the mm -hmm. faculty, um, the teachers. Coaches. So you you were north. Yes. But you would go sit. Yes. With the Wildcat, yeah. the Willie yes. Fan Club. Oh yeah. Win. Oh yeah. I Definitely. Love that. I love yeah. That. And you know, uh, back in the day when Tiki Bridey, Neil Browning, Guy Hall, mm. Melvin Bell, mm. Melvin Bell, <laughs> the announcer, <laughs> right. and we would be home with our 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 coat hanger in the door and we put nets on them and we would be emulating that as we listen to it on the radio nice. or in real time we go to the game so yeah so that's a piece of history for you all and some of you know about it definitely definitely absolutely yeah, yeah. so uh talk to me about north <laughs> high school during the uh, school time in the building in the school building uh what kind of guy were you what was wow. your mentors who gave you some uh some jewels to lead you to the person you are today. <laughs> well, you know, man, uh, Mr. Wallace, uh, uh, I was so different than I am now. I was, okay. uh, I was a, a, a really skinny kid. Uh, I was shy. I was quiet. I was a follower. I just loved to hang out with my guy friends and mm -hmm. really wasn't interested in girls. Uh, I was really just trying to find my way. And I had some protectors back then. I was like, uh, Tukey Brownston and, and, and Joey Howard, the two biggest guys at our school, be like, don't nobody mess with Massey. That's oh, our boy. Too. 
Yeah, Uncle Tooth. <laughs> but I remember walking through the hall my first year there, and there was a big guy named Eric Bauer. I mean, he was the biggest guy I'd ever seen. He ended up going to play football uh, at, at a D1 school for a little bit, but he was a lineman. And mm -hmm. I remember looking at him, and I was like, that guy's so big. But my first experience going into the school, that's kind of what it was like. And uh, <clears throat> just being embraced by teachers, I think for me it helped me with diversity because coming from a predominantly black school where the culture was, you know, mm -hmm. mainly people of color, mm -hmm. coming over into a predominantly white school, mm -hmm. being embraced, seeing some shades of systemic racism, but also a lot of support from people. Mm -hmm playing with different guys, having friends. Today I have some lifelong friends who are, who are white and, mm -hmm. and teachers and educators are still in doing this work that I, I really appreciate what they poured in and gave me mm -hmm. uh, as, as a student that was a shy, little skinny kid. So yeah, I, I gained a lot from going there, definitely. Okay. Yeah, love, love the community, love the, that side of town and what North produced, the athletes that came out of there. Elliot Fuller was one of our champions. Mm -hmm. I was always impressed with him, his work ethic, how he studied. We would want to go hang out. He went to he Northwestern, said, right? Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he went to Northwestern. Was, I think he was all Big Ten, mm -hmm. academic scholar, chemical engineer. He went mm -hmm. on had a stellar career, and he was always just a great guy. And his mother and father, they put a lot into him. So was, was, that, a, was that a person that kind of started to get you um, leaning towards a certain way you wanted to be? Yeah, he was He was one of those guys I would always look at and say, he's built different. Mm -hmm. Something about him that, mm -hmm. that was attractive. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was, uh, you know, I had a mother with Superwoman. You know, my father wasn't around, but mom, was, she did her job. She, uh, she put me in places to where she made sure her son would feel valued, uh, like worthy and have opportunity to right. be able to dream. But watching his study habits alone was was really impactful for me because I just, I just didn't have it back then. Yeah. But I always said, I wish one day I could study and go on. And I ended up going to get my master's degree. Mm -hmm. and, and now a lot of people don't know I'm about to explore a DTL program. I got accepted, so I'm going to work on my doctorate. And uh, once I get it, I'm going to be just like Dr. Ron Gordon. I'm going to say, don't okay. call me doctor. Just call me Steven. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, looking at those guys, you, you never know who's watching you. So if any of you viewers or any of the students or, or leaders, just know that people are watching us. And there is an opportunity for us to share with them our humanness, but also show them what we do to work hard and what others are capable of doing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I, I and, uh, you know, I have a chance sometimes to mentor some young men. And uh, one of the subjects we were talking about is it's OK to recognize good in your peers. I don't think there's enough of that mm -hmm. in today's youth yeah. of recognizing good in someone else and trying to tap into that yeah. instead of trying to downplay it or as, as, as the word nowadays is hate yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, you didn't have that. You saw something and you wasn't, it wasn't jealousy or it wasn't uh, enviness. You were like, I wanna get yeah. some of that. Yeah. And what you did was, and I try to tell these kids, you didn't block your blessings. Mm. You, you, you were accepting that somebody had something that you were trying to, you didn't know what you were looking for and like, hey, yeah. I want some of that. Yeah. And I think that's a big yeah. part of uh, yeah. uh, teaching these kids yeah. that, that aspect of a relationship. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm glad that you're here and you're speaking that. Yeah. Um, give us a little bit, okay, you, uh, you told us about high school and you're in your uh, doctor. I know you. You well, have a. I got accepted, but you got so accepted. I'm scheduled to start, and I was really trying to keep this low key because I don't want people walking around. Accountability is a good thing. Yeah. So you tell your circle and your support, right. hey, so they can check in on, hey, how's that going? Yeah. But I don't want people. Ah, he's working on. You got your PhD yet? Yeah. Leave yeah. me alone. Leave I me just alone. want to live. You but... got yours yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. If you got yours, yeah. Then go ahead and talk because to me. Because this is not about getting it to say I have one. Right. This is about a legacy. This yes. is about breaking family. I'm first generation mm -hmm. graduate, a college graduate in my family, and I'm prideful of that. Mm -hmm. So it sets a bar for my son. 
and my grandkids, and, and also for anybody watching that you can do anything you put your mind to. Yeah. It's not about look at me. It's more about legacy, uh, contribution, like leaving a legacy, some research that will transform this community. And so there's some reasons why I want that, like others who have gone before me and done it. You have a yes. why. You have a why. Yes. Absolutely. Speaking of why, you have another why with the Awakenings. Yes. Tell us about that program. Wow. So Awakenings is my baby. It's like a child that I gave birth yeah, to. You, you get it, don't you? Yes, I do. And I know my brother's keeper, you've been real significant in that circle mm -hmm. and many others. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just really proud to know you and the work you do. I hope we get to do more together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, I've always, always liked to look at you as a younger uh, guy who has been done a lot. I always used to admire your you know, your athletic abilities and like you play Appreciate high that. level sports and that transferred over into a lot of what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. So you're a leader in our community and mm -hmm. we need to mandate that. Absolutely. And so, Thank you. But Awakenings is a baby that I was sitting one day on my couch looking out the window on a snowy day saying, when I was a kid, I got some support from people, single parent mom. My dad was my hero. He just wasn't around when I was young. He came back into my life. But real quick, just to say that I was thinking, what would kids, what would I have wanted to have gotten from people in mm -hmm. the community that I didn't receive? Like intentionality. So I said, I would want it to have been invited to events. I would want someone to say, I see you. I would want someone to say, what do you dream of? Mm -hmm. I would want someone to say, let me show you something. So from that, I started thinking, okay, God, I, I love kids. I just really don't like to work with them hands on. It's just not my thing. I can hang out with them and say, see y'all later. Let me act like, because I'm a big kid, right? <laughs> right. And, and I remember him speaking to me saying, yeah, if you fail my kids, you failed me. If you don't do something for our youth, you can serve all these adults all you want. These are my people. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you know, you can never do enough, but I love you. But if you fail to do something with our kids, then you fail me. And I remember just coming to tears, say, having an awakening, saying, I got to do something. And so from there, I just started talking to community members and people. And I started going to schools, talking to kids, saying, how do you see the world? I know how I see it. Let me inside. And you know what? I got some mind-blowing research and data from that. You know, mm -hmm. just understanding that we need to let them show us what the world looks like to them. Mm -hmm. And then we can share with them some of the things we've learned and we bring that together we bridge the gap yes and next thing you know we have a new thriving community of dreamers believers doers achievers mm -hmm. champions and so that's kind of what awakenings is in a nutshell it's a social justice engine devoted to empowerment and inclusion creating access points for youth we do research around health disparities right now i'm in my third year uh, of a contract under a smoking grant to help with smoking and, and cessation in communities of color. Mm -hmm. That's well needed work. And also we do a lot of prevention and we just do all kinds of other things. Absolutely. So yeah, that's that's kind of what Awakenings is as a nutshell. I love it. Um, I want to take this time to forward, uh, formally invite you to, to speak at our uh, teen summit this summer, June 22nd. So wow. I want to be in contact with you to, to talk about that. You have been in our conversations. I would be honored. So sometimes God brings people wow. right around each other when it's yeah. time, and, and, and timing is everything. Yes. May not be on our time, but yeah. it's always on time. Yeah. So I'd be honored, um, definitely. How, back to Awakening, how can we, uh, if someone wants to find more about the Awakening, how, yeah. how would they find yeah. out? If you want to go to Awakenings or want to find out more about Awakenings, first you can contact me, but you can go to Awakenings at ClarkCo.com. That's our website. And I usually, mm -hmm. and me and my volunteer staff, we usually are posting events, things we've done. Uh, you know, I know we've done something mm -hmm. significant with the Springfield City Schools recently when we kicked off uh, Do the Right Thing campaign mm -hmm. with Dr. With Ron Gordon. <laughs> uh, he, he pulled me into that circle. And I, I was just grateful to sit with that lady, the champion, who won last year. Mm -hmm. And like I said, she was a rock star. And we were able to talk to the, the middle school student body in Springfield City Schools and mm -hmm. like kind of motivate them. Let's get started. Let's do this. Right. Because the Ohio Attorney General had done some research and it showed that 
when the youth were writing around the state about the impact violence had on them and also uh, how they can change and, and, and reduce violence, man, they've got some good feedback. Yeah. And it also reduce youth violence across the state. Uh, one last question, man. And I ask all my guests this. Okay. Especially the featured alumnus. If you were able to talk to the 17-year-old you, you right now was able to talk to the 17-year-old you, 16-year-old wow, you. that's a good one. What wow. would you tell them? And you had 20 seconds to talk to them. Wow. What would you tell them? Well, I would probably say, if I could talk to me at 17, uh, you're loved by more than your mother and your family. You're loved by many. I see greatness in you, and I'm not giving you lip service, but I can see that you have a destiny to be great. And if you take this time to listen to what I'm sharing with you, you'll find an opportunity to go places you never dreamed of going. And I hope I get to sit back and watch the show when I'm an old man and you bring me an ice cream cone. Mr. Stephen Massey, find me wherever I'm at. That's probably what I would say, because that's, that's awesome. been my experience with kids uh, and youth, adolescents. They're in a pivotal transitional period, either whether they're 17, 16, 15, 14, all they're the right down. there in the brink of adult, right all the way down to what you're yeah, going to say? I, I would say fifth grade, the way social media so there it is. and the access they have they're to... In a pivotal, yeah. They're in a pivotal transitional period through those ages and that's mm -hmm. those spaces. And so that's probably what I'd say to a 17-year-old knucklehead, Stephen Massey, who just had a good heart and loved, loved his boys, his friends. That's what we used to do, man. We used to just play and have camaraderie. It, it wasn't about having opposite. That opposition is a is a word that comes from warfare. Yeah, it's not even a community community social word. Right. Somewhere along the and those are things we got to do. We got to start working with kids, saying, "Hey, tell us what you, your language is, yeah, so we can help you help them. reset that tongue and suspend that stuff. It's not even it's not even conducive to like love mm -hmm. and support for you. Right. You deserve that. So. Yeah, I just uh, that's what I would say to me. <laughs> well, that that's yes. that's that was that was one of the better ones that I've had in mm. our five episodes. It was wow. really great, um, Stephen. Thank you very much. I wish thank you, you continued success yeah. on uh, blessing others. Well, thank you. Um, anybody who is out here with the sole purpose to bless others deserves their flowers. Wow. Face to face. So. Um, I've I've seen you. I watch you. Uh, I know we we're gonna work more together. Yeah, I look forward because to it. that's that's just how it's that's how it's planned. That's yeah. in the plan. Yeah. I feel that you feel that. Yeah. Um, and I thank you very much. Well, All right. Thank you for having uh, me, ladies and gentlemen. Stephen Massey will be back on Cat Chat. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cat Chat for our Cat Den happenings today. I'm joined by students from Perrin Woods Elementary and everyone here was um, involved or a participant in the first ever Southside speech soiree. Make sure I got to get that out. Um, so I just want to have everybody who is joining me um, introduce yourself. So tell me your name and what grade you're in. Why don't we start down here? Deidre Howard and I'm in the sixth grade. Okay. Victory, tell me your name and what grade you're in. I, my name is Victory and I'm in first grade. Awesome. Gilberto, tell me your name and what grade you're in. My name is Gilberto and I, I'm in first grade. Awesome. My name is Cameron and I'm in the sixth grade. Perfect. Now, the three of you were participants in Deidre, you were the MC, right? In the, in the <gasps> Southside speech soiree. Um, Cameron, why don't you tell me exactly kind of what this event was. What did you guys do? We, we like had a competition, like whoever wanted to um, win a medal or like inspire other kids to um, read more or do speech in front of people more. So Deidre, tell me how it was set up. So you were the MC. so what did you have to do to get ready for this event? I had to make sure that the microphone was working and I wasn't glitching and 
I had to get the paper set up so that I know that I was saying. Mm -hmm. And you were kind of introducing everyone before they came on, right? So everyone um, that was coming on, we had first through <coughs> first through sixth graders who were preparing all of these different speeches on a variety of topics. So Cameron, why don't you talk a little bit about what your speech was about? My speech was about a football player named Ray Lewis. He played, then I, that's my favorite football player. He played football um, in 1996 for the Baltimore Ravens. He inspired me to play football more. That's awesome. How did you feel getting up there and talking in front of everybody? I was nervous. Yeah. Gilberto, how did you feel when you were getting up there and talking in front of everybody? Were you nervous? Were you excited? How did you feel? I was being chilling. You were being chilling? You yeah. weren't nervous at all? No, I was excited. I was being chilling. You were excited to get up in front of everybody and do your speech? Yes, I also being chilling. Victory, how did you feel? I felt confident in myself. You did? How did it feel once you had done your speech and you had completed it and everyone was cheering for you? How did that feel? I felt happy. Yeah. Deidre, how did it feel once the event was over um, and you got to see kind of all of the families and the audiences um, and just knowing what your school had completed? Good. Yeah. How about you, Cameron? I was happy. So Cameron was one of our top placers. Um, Victory and Gilberto were one of our top placers. And then our first place winner was Miss Jackson's first grade class. Um, and we wish we could have had all of them here today, but as you can imagine, we don't have enough seats for all of that. Um, but they were also fantastic. So we would really like to have Victory and Gilberto perform their speech if they would like to. Would you guys like to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's called I Am Somebody, <laughs> the speech. Yours is? No, Ms. Jackson's class. Yes, hers was. Would you guys like to perform yours? Yes. Yep. Okay, why don't you guys do that for everybody on Cat Chat? I'll start with the, the title. I'm not afraid of anything, author unknown. I'm not afraid of anything, not anything at all. Not wiggling snakes or spiders who are climbing up my wall. Well, my friend, if you must know, I'm not as brave as I. I'm afraid of my own shadow, a great big scaredy cat. You know that you can stick with me when your stomach's in a knot. I'll hold your hand and show you all the courage that you've got. Already I am feeling braver just by knowing you. I'm not afraid, but what's that noise? Don't you hear it? Boo. 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 <laughs> We're a little delayed on the boo. <laughs> That's okay. You guys are just as perfect as you did on that night. Good job, guys. Thank you. I think we have to try again uh, with the... Should we try the boo again? Yeah. Let's, let's do the boo again, okay? Let's start with the... Uh, already I am feeling braver one, okay? All right. Go ahead, Gilberto. Already I am feeling braver just by knowing you. I'm not afraid, but what's that noise? Don't you hear it? Boo. Boo! Very good. Understood. All right, we got, we got it, Gilberto. Thank you, Google. Okay, I thought you guys did really well with that. Did it take you guys a long time to learn that for the event? Not that much. I no? Don't know. How long did it take you to learn that for the event, Gilberto? Two minutes. Two minutes? Yep. No way. Victory, how long did it take you to learn that for the event? One minute. One No way. Mm -hmm. That whole thing, had you learned that in school? Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. I read it every day. Cameron, did you try to kind of memorize yours before the event? Yes, I, I did it almost every night. Yeah? For how long? For I read it 
three times trying not to read the paper, mm -hmm. and then I read it three times trying to read the paper, reading the paper. That's great. So it was a very student-run event, um, taking turns introducing the speakers, um, and really giving the kids the opportunity um, to have their own moment, which I thought was great. Cameron, um, do you think that you will continue to do some speaking in the future? Uh, yes. Yes, because my dad does a lot of community work. He speaks a lot, so I think I'll start doing that. Yeah. You all were very good at it. I thought you all did a fantastic job. You had a lot of confidence mm -hmm. and... It looked really fun too. Yeah. Okay. Well, and some of you, you two especially, will be there again. And you could do this again next year. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yep. Yeah. So thank you guys for coming on our podcast and talking about the speech soiree. Cool. And we will be back in just a couple minutes with more Cat Chat. All right, Chris. Well, I think that's a wrap on this month's show uh, on our podcast anniversary. Make it work. Podcast. Make it work somehow. Anniversary. It's a anniver. No. And if somebody can make this work somehow, that we'll would be great. We'll give you a swag bag too. Yeah. <laughs> Give them away too this month. Anniversary and podcast all in one. Let me see what you got. No. Anniversary. It'll hit me when I'm sleeping or something. Yeah. It won't hit me when I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be asleep. Well, we need to say thank you to all of our guests for this month. Thank you to Perrin Woods yes. and all of your wonderful students. Yes. Thank you to commissional commissioners, Crystal Brown. Yes. Commissioner Tracy Tackett. And thank you to Stephen Massey. Stephen Massey, thank you very much. Appreciate sir. all of your time coming on here and informing everybody about all of, uh, really, all of your different segments. Yeah, yeah, doing great things in the community and uh, some things people know and some things people don't know. For sure. That's why you got to come check out Cat Chat. Absolutely. Because we, 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 we dig in. We dig into the, the person's lives so you can understand what they're doing. And I really enjoy it. Yes, yes. And we got a lot of great things going here. So, yep. all right. Well, I think that's, that's it for this month. And so let's send them home, Chris. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. See you. See you next month. Don't forget to send those high fives. You don't want to miss this swag. Y'all look at this. Come on. And the, and the cat chat pot <laughs> See y'all <laughs> next month. Bye. Later.